Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number one of the AP Academy and overall this is going to be a really weird season because my team is really interesting. Uh, this is going to be my first time ever using Mel Metal and I do also have the G-Max um, Grimmsnarl, both of which I don't really think have good matchups here at all. Um, I ended up leaving my G-Max on the bench and I honestly considered not bringing Mel Metal, but I'm hoping that Mel Metal kind of lives up to some of the hype and Choice Band Double Iron Bash can do damage even against mons that resist it naturally but uh on the other end you can see in team preview there's just a darmanitan which has always been a monster and it's going to continue to be a monster we have my beloved necrozma and a g max toxicity which really my team does not handle that well uh that combination of stabs uh is not great for my team which honestly forces me into having to bring a uh, Sovali ground, which is not ideal for my, the makeup of my, of my team. I really do need more water resist, and it ultimately does leave me a little bit weak to Gazardon. Now, Gazardon, I'm not the most worried about, only because I can chip it down, and I can, um, pack Raz Pledge on my Sovali ground. So even though on paper it doesn't look great, um, if I, if I get it low enough, I believe, um, right around half to 60 ish percent is going to be where i need it to be for grass pledge to kind of do what i needed to do and overall i think my team uh matches up okay it's just going to be a matter of pick my moments because gasheron is going to stop a lot of what my team wants to do in this matchup and i kind of kind of went all in on a team that uh is weak to gasheron but like i said hopefully i can just deal damage to it over time but uh, but uh, a handful of other things that just kind of stop my team in its tracks. Things like uh, the Steelix. Things like the Steelix are reasons why I have to be weak to Gastrodon uh, this week. And um, the more that I bring for the Toxicity, the, the softer I become to the Gastrodon. But all of this with a gosh dang monster of a Darmanitan in, in, in the back is something that I have to keep in the back of my head. Overall, I think my team matches up okay. Um... It's just going to be a matter of having most of my team match up okay, and then having one or two mons on his team that can just absolutely shut me down. But with that, I'm just going to get straight into the match because uh, this is a pretty spicy one. So here we are uh, into the match, and I really did struggle with what I wanted to lead off with. Um, I like I said, this is a matchup where I got stopped by a lot on his team, so um, whatever I put out... I had to try to not get stopped by uh, whatever he chose to lead off with. I thought Rotom Heat would be kind of a catch-all lead where I can try either pivot out or kind of manage um, what I'm trying to do here. Manage whatever he, he wants to bring out here as best I can. Uh, he leads off with a Darmanitan. I did not expect this thing to want to uh, just stay in and hit me. I kind of wanted to go for the... Uh, Volt Switch here. Just try to get some momentum on my side. I believe I thought about this for quite a while because um, I really struggled with this turn. I really did want to click Thunder Wave as well, but I really just didn't expect this thing to want to stay in here. Uh, I thought Volt Switching would be the best play overall. As he goes for the Rock Slide, so now I'm really just kicking myself over not clicking Thunder Wave because that would have been such a huge, huge um, opportunity for the rest of this match to kind of neutralize this thing a little bit uh e even though it can just deal massive damage to my team just being able to deal with it a little bit better throughout the match was going to be huge for me i thought um but regardless i think uh, right now i'm trying to consider whether or not i should just click stealth rocks here to try to set myself up to kind of um have a better time for the remainder of this matchup but regardless uh i really don't want anything in front of this a Darmanitan it's just an absolute monster to me and I'm I still don't even know what this thing could be it could be uh, um he does switch out which does make me think that it's um choice but honestly just with the matchup what, what it is he, he's pretty darn free to want to go for the um choice banded Darmanitan which is hugely scary but does end up going into the Gastron, which again is a huge issue for my team but uh I felt like the just getting up rocks here was the best thing that I could have done to put myself in a decent position for the rest of this match. And here, again, I'm struggling with what I want to do because my team does not match up well. Here's where I'm really, you know, starting to realize just how badly I match up against this Gastrodon. But, um, for right now, uh, this was actually a moment where I thought by bringing in my Inteleon, I could make him think that I had something for this Gastrodon that I actually just don't have. As he just goes for the Toxic, he's also free to, t to just Toxic my team and spread damage around on my team quite just pretty darn freely right because i really don't have a whole lot of counterplay to it so um i kind of have to mitigate how much damage this thing is going to be able to spread around my team 
But yeah, I'm I'm honestly trying to make him believe that I have some some kind of a grass knot, even though I don't think this thing gets grass knot. But um, this is such a new mon that I'm hoping that he doesn't know that and that I can uh, catch him a, a little bit on on the back foot here. But he stays in. He absolutely knows that I have nothing for him. Uh, the best that I could have done there was try to dark pulse flinch, but uh, I end up going for a U turn again, trying to get a little bit of momentum. Uh, I did mildly expect the earth power uh he very easily could have scalded and that would have been not great for me but uh i do get a little bit of um hp back and i can just try to uh deal damage to this thing i did think about trying to switch around trying to figure out what my best course of action would be but at the same time um this rotom heat already took so much damage i uh, I was thinking in my head as to what this Rotom Heat could do later on in the match. And honestly, I couldn't have come up with many scenarios where this Rotom Heat uh, could get healthier through leftovers or just kind of do what it needs to do in terms of switching out, getting a status off, or just dealing damage. So I kind of just let this thing go down here in exchange for some overheat damage. And now here's where I'm really starting to think to myself... This is going to be my opportunity to just kind of deal the damage that I need to on this Gastrodon. I, first of all, I'm really curious to know how much damage this does, but I did see from the Inteleon U-turn that this thing is Rocky Helmet. So this thing is kind of tailor-made to kind of deal with um, my Melmetal. However, uh, my thinking here was honestly just like, I, no matter how much you, you try to pre pre prepare for Melmetal, uh, Choice Banded Double Iron Bash is still going to do some damage, and it does do quite a bit of damage here. Enough that it does slightly more than he's recovering off. So, uh, I am going to take a lot of Rocky Helmet damage, but overall, even if I have to give up this Melmetal just for damage onto this Gastrodon, and, and, and like I said, just enough that I can do more than he's recovering off, and even at the exchange of that Rocky Helmet damage, it still feels worth it to me to kind of set up the rest of my team here. And I'm, uh, I'm not gonna like win the match with Melmetal anymore. But I don't think that was ever really um, on the table for me because of the fact that my Melmetal did not have the best matchup, and it is just so slow, and I and it really is not in a great position to do what I needed to do here. But he does go into the Celix here, pretty not ideal for me. But uh, I can just get off some double Iron Bash damage. Thankfully, this thing is not also Rocky Helmet, which uh, was definitely a possibility once I saw the first Rocky Helmet. I thought. Um, I definitely thought that that could be a possibility here, but uh, it does make me think of what I can do. Um, I do end up trying to save my Melmetal, just assuming that he would want to um, maybe get an Earthquake off, and I could take advantage of the Earthquake by getting up a free Stamina Boost, but instead, uh, that's exactly what he does. Uh, I was gonna, I, I thought maybe he got rocks up here, but no, he doesn't, and just gives me a decently free Stamina Boost, although that does quite a bit more damage than I would have expected it to. But uh, it does put me in an okay position to just kind of try to 1v1 this thing, or at the very least, just deal damage to this thing enough that... I, uh, because again, this is another one of those mons that can stop a lot of what I'm trying to do in this matchup. So I I try to gauge some Earthquake damage. Uh, it doesn't okay him out, but he's going to reveal the Toxic, and this is going to be super problematic for me. Um, I wasn't expecting any type of super, super stally uh, situations here, but... Uh, Mudsdale was a mon that really did, that really was in a position to kind of deal dents to his team and kind of set up a few mons later on in the matchup. I really did want to have this Mudsdale around for quite a bit longer, but Toxic is just going to really mess me up. But, um, but at the very least, look, I can take out, I can either take out this Steelix that's in front of me or get very close to it or deal some damage to whatever wants to come in, but he reveals to be a uh, Toxic Protect. And this was a moment where I just, uh, kind of... It kind of lost my enjoyment in this match a little bit. I really uh, hated to see Toxic Protect come out in this moment. But it really was the Celix's best way of dealing with, of trying to deal with Mudsdale. And now it's getting so healthy with Leftovers that um, I'm, it's clearly out of KO range now. So not only am I going to have to try to deal with this thing uh, just in general, but I'm going to have to deal with this thing trying to... Um, Protect stall me as it gets the double protect, which uh, really, really just killed me in this moment. I real that's the opposite of what I wanted to see in this moment. But uh, he he went he went for the double protect and he got it. I mean, regardless, like I said, I think he was out of KO range there, so I guess I would have had to deal with protect on the following turn, no matter what happened. But uh, at the very least, I like I had a chance to KO like on a crit or something, but. Yeah, now he's very clearly out of out of KO range. 
And <sighs> I'm ultimately going to get 1v1 by, gosh dang, Steelix with Toxic Protect. And again, it was just, it was, it was just a very unfun moment for me. It, um, I, as much as I understand it was his best uh, counterplay to my Mudsdale, I, it was just not what I felt like I wanted to see at this moment. Um, regardless, we're, we're going to deal with it. I'm going to get taken out. I guess I'm considering switching out. I'm not entirely sure what I'm considering here. But uh, I do... St I'm, I, I'm really falling well far, far behind here. I do have a couple of things in the back, right? So m my... My Sovali is a mon that, um, overall, hi um, his team struggles to be deal with now that the Gastron is down, or very close to being down, I believe. And um, Colossal is going to have an interesting time if I can make certain things happen. But overall, I mean, it's not looking great at the, in this moment, right? I still have to deal with the toxicity. Uh, he still uh, he still also doesn't know that my Sovali is a uh, ground so he still has to deal with that but Sovali is cl very clearly my optimal play here because of the parting shot opportunities and because uh, the rest of his team is not the fastest at, at the moment so i'm just gonna try to see what i can do with Sovali ground here uh as he goes into the darmanitan now uh this is pretty darn problematic for me however however um it is pretty obvious that a Flare Bliss is going to come in. I think um, no matter what, a, a, um, damage to my Sovali is absolutely what he's going to want here to be able to um, win this match in, in later game, even if I am uh, Sovali ground. However, this is kind of the moment that I was trying to orchestrate from the beginning. So Flare Blitz goes into my Colossal. Uh, Colossal is naturally very defensive. I get Steam Engine up, and I get to gosh dang plus six. Now, this is a very new Mon with a very new ability, so I actually think I take a second here just to make sure that I am in fact at plus six, and that and that I did remember how Steam Engine worked. Uh, if I if I get hit with a Water or Fire move, um, I get to plus six speed immediately, which uh, is obviously one of the reasons that I drafted this thing, so that Fire is not as spammable against a Melmetal team as. Um, it would seem because if I do get hit by a fire move, if I can switch in on a fire move, then Colossal is in a really interesting position to kind of deal damage. Now, this is a Life Warp Colossal designed to, to take a Flare Blitz and um, deal massive amounts of damage to the team. And uh, it is reasonably pro problematic that that uh, he does have the Gastron in the back that I now have to deal with. He's probably running Gastron Calcs right now, trying to figure out whether or not, first of all, whether or not I'm like Pasho or Shookaberry, but uh, because he does have to call that correctly. Oh no, I just revealed Life Orb, so that's going to be a non-issue, but um, he must be running some type of Calx, uh, uh, hoping that the Gastrodon could just straight up KO me, and then, I'm not, and then I'm not some crazy kind of colossal set that can take these types of hits. But, this is exactly where I was thinking to myself, I can I can try to burn up, and the way that burn up works is you can only use burn up if you're a fire type, but by using burn up, you lose your fire typing, and, and just in general, it's a base 130... Um, fire move, so so a reasonably strong fire move, but it causes me to lose my fire typing, which allows me to take the earth power from the Gastrodon, and this is a moment where, again, I was completely out of Gastrodon checks, so if this didn't work, I really didn't have much against this Gastrodon, other than, um, again, the, the, the Savali Grass Pledge, but, um... That was gonna be difficult for me to pull off, no matter what, because I do need my Sovali to do a decent amount for me, but... Regardless, I, I go down to my own life orb recoil, Re but regardless, my Colossal just came in, ate a Flare Blitz, got to plus 6 speed, and got 2 KOs. So I am uh, remarkably remarkably proud of what my uh, Colossal was able to do here. Now here's a moment where uh, it is a blind double down, and it was a really difficult decision, but I I, I think I absolutely bungled this decision. I do not I, I'm I'm not happy with what I do in this in this moment. So I so in my in my head I'm thinking to myself that my Mel Metal is pretty much uh down no matter what happens, so it can pretty much just come in here, let me get the intel on what he's trying to switch into, and then um I can position myself better for some kind of end game that gets me more KOs because I don't think uh I don't think I'm able to win this match anymore, but I can at the, at the very least make it a competitive match and try to um, make it a match where uh, I can try to figure something out here, right? And uh, this was also a moment of me just being um, a little bit checked out because, again, 
I really didn't see a path to winning this matchup, but I go into my my Inteleon because I wasn't paying attention enough to see the white herb pop on the close combat. In my head, I was thinking it was it was gonna be some kind of um other crazy item that it can drop. I thought I don't know. I I don't even know what item I was thinking in, in my head, but close combat white herb makes so much sense in the situation, right? And I just wasn't paying attention enough to see it. And um, so first of all, I feel reasonably silly for going into my my melt metal when I looking back on it now, I do think that either my Inteleon or my Sovali were infinitely better. I think I think in the moment I should have gone into Silva or into um, Inteleon. I think that would have uh, made for a much better endgame. I could have at least hit this thing hard. I don't know. Maybe gotten a crit. Maybe maybe like gotten some some kind of crazy KO here. Um, but I think it would no matter what happens. I think it would have gotten more pressure on. It would have kept more pressure on, and uh, it would have kept my metal metal in the back. Now all this is moot because I don't think there's any way that that the that the three remaining mons that I had would ever be able to to deal with the necrozma in the back. But I do wish that I had played this better. I could have at least kind of maneuvered myself better and felt better about this end game looking back on it. But regardless, he does hit me with the close combat. I take that reasonably okay, and I am able to hit it back with a with a multi attack at minus one defenses. Uh, does just straight up Oko, and he goes into the toxicity here, which really confused me in the moment. Um, because this is a max special defense of Ollie, and if I can somehow take a hit, then I'm in, I'm in a position where I can potentially do something against this thing. But I, um, in all honesty, in, in the moment, I don't think it, it, like like it, like it really registered for me enough because again, I was kind of checked out of this game. I thought he was going to be able to KO me anyway. But he goes for the Gigantamax, which is huge in this moment because he had Boom Burst on his set. Max Strike was based off of Boom Burst. Which is very, very important here because by G maxing and going for the max strike, he loses the punk rock boost, which actually means that my max special defense Silvali is able to take the hit, go for multi attack ground, and straight up Oko this gosh dang toxicity, which was a huge moment for me. It brings it down to a 1 0 loss for me. But again, I, I don't think I ever really had many good answers to the Necrozma. I think, um, at best, my best answer would have been to keep my, my, my Melmetal as healthy as possible. And Double Iron Bash might have gotten me there in the end if I could take a hit. But that would have been a huge, huge question mark because, um, Melmetal does not have the best special defense. So I would have had to, uh, orchestrate it well enough that my Melmetal could take a hit and then potentially KO with double iron bash i would have loved to see those calcs um i'm gonna try to like leave it count in the in the uh comments or something like that but um it that's an end game that i would have loved to see but regardless i don't think i ever would have gotten there because i think um even if i did go into 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 in inteleon or i don't think it okos the hit only so i don't think i ever get there in the end but i suppose i suppose you could think about it right now for a second so let's say i do get down to hit only and inteleon I would have had to super crit the hit only, and if I do get that Oko onto the hit only, then he can go into the toxicity. Absolutely, and at that point, I probably sack off Mel Metal. I then I probably go into Silvali. Silvali KOs the toxicity pretty easily in that moment, and then it becomes a match between uh, Silvali and Necrozma. He, he had Autotomize on his set. I do remember that very, very clearly. So he either takes a turn to Autotomize or... And takes a hit from the, from the, from the Silvali, which he probably takes. And then he can KO my team. Yeah, yeah. Taking a turn to Autotomize is his best play. If he, if he just tried to KO my Silvali... Well, actually, what I could have done was uh, was thinking that he could Autotomize. I, I would have had to have known that he was going to Autotomize. But I could have clicked Parting Shot. Uh... And then gone out into into Inteleon, hope that I could take a hit and try to dark pulse him. I don't know. That's super dubious. Re regardless, he would have had to have taken a turn to KO my my Silvali without clicking autonomize, and then I could go into then I can go into uh, Inteleon, click dark pulse a bunch of times, hope that I can flinch down the Necrozma and try to win from there. But that would have been a super dubious path to victory. Uh, I think he absolutely had it in the end. A lot of would have had it gone. 
super right for me to make things happen regardless that's gonna be for me thank you guys so much for watching uh we'll be back with many more weeks of the apa academy um as well as the closing of the ubl season as well as a brand brand new thing that might not even be announced yet but um by the time this comes out um it should i i think it'll be out there that uh, i'll be taking over team in the ncp team is really interesting but once again with that thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you again Out.